I pressed charges against my mother for stalking me and falsely accusing me of being a drug dealer. However, I wanted to minimize my time in court to avoid being near her. The following events are a combination of my account and my father's recollection from five years ago. Initially, my father had no idea that my mother had traveled to my state with the intention of stalking me. She had told him she was going on a brief vacation for her mental well-being, but didn't disclose her destination. If my father had known her plans, he would have warned me. Over the course of several days, my mother clandestinely followed me and my girlfriend using her smartphone to capture photos of us. She gained access to our home by using a spare key hidden inside a fake rock. After she returned home, my father noticed her unusually smug demeanor. It was as if she believed she had achieved a victory. However, her jubilant mood quickly dissipated when the police arrived and arrested her on Christmas Day. According to my father, she cried and protested her innocence as she was taken away by law enforcement. The evidence against her was irrefutable. All the incriminating photos were found on her phone and my father promptly realized the extent of her actions. She even made the call accusing me of drug dealing using her own phone, which was easily traced back to her. When confronted with the evidence, my mother broke down into tears and pleaded for mercy. She refused to cooperate and had to be physically moved from the table by the police. No one posted bail for her and she had to use her own funds to secure her release. She contemplated calling me to beg for help, but seemingly realized I wouldn't come to her aid after what she had done. Consequently, she remained locked up until she could afford her own release. Surprisingly, she didn't attempt to flee. In her mind, she believed she was justified in her actions and felt confident she could persuade a judge to see things her way. Against her lawyer's advice, she decided to represent herself in court. Predictably, this turned out to be a disastrous choice. The trial took place sooner than I expected, and both my girlfriend and I had to fly over to testify against my mother. I stayed only as long as necessary and took the first available flight back. During my presence at the trial, my mother seemed to stare at me incessantly, alternating between a creepy, pleading gaze and intense rage. When my mother took the stand... She delivered a speech explaining why she believed her actions were justified. She asserted that I needed to be taught a lesson for refusing to return home and for prioritizing a cheap girl over her. She attempted to maintain eye contact with me throughout her speech, but the judge repeatedly admonished her for doing so. I left before the sentencing took place. The judge concluded that my mother was mentally unwell, which enraged her. She vehemently argued that she was perfectly sane and simply acting as a concerned mother who resorted to extreme measures to teach me a lesson. My father intervened and corroborated all my accusations, which caused my mother to lash out at him. Guards had to intervene to keep them apart. Initially, the judge had intended to be lenient, but he ultimately decided that my mother needed significant time behind bars. She received a two-year prison sentence along with three years of probation, when the sentence was handed down, my mother threw a tantrum, reminiscent of a toddler. She pounded her fists and cried like a baby, requiring assistance to be removed from the courtroom due to her refusal to cooperate. For my father, the following two years were a period of pure bliss without her presence. He made up his mind to divorce her as soon as she was released, intending to serve her the divorce papers on the very day she came home. True to his word, he left the house for good taking his Airstream trailer and parking it at a friend's place. He spent several months battling my mother in the divorce proceedings, during which more alarming details about her behavior came to light. Eventually, my father emerged victorious and wasted no time in relocating to my state with his trailer. During my senior year, an incident occurred that showcased my mother's ability to take down both my bully and her terrible father, who supported her behavior. Let me share the story with you. One day after school, I decided to walk home instead of taking the bus. It was a quicker option, and I didn't have a first-period class, so I could sleep in until 9.30. Little did I know that trouble was waiting for me in the form of a girl from the neighborhood who already had a grudge against me. Out of the blue, she attempted to punch me. Although she managed to land a hit, her proximity proved to be her downfall. 
In a reflexive moment, I grabbed her weave and used it as leverage to slam her face into the concrete. As fate would have it, a police officer lived nearby and rushed to the scene. Both of us bore the marks of the altercation. I had a bruised jaw while she suffered from a bloody lip and nose and her weave was left behind. Fortunately, the officer witnessed the entire incident and recognized her false claims when she tried to blame me for starting the fight. Thus, he deemed it an act of self-defense and refrained from arresting me. After reaching home, I recounted the incident to my mother. As soon as I mentioned the girl's name, it sparked a memory in my mom's mind. She swiftly checked her computer and discovered that this girl's father had mistreated her in the past and owed her two months' worth of overdue rent. The following day was a Saturday, and my mother took me along to confront the man. I stood behind her, towering over her by about six inches while he attempted to berate us both. He even threatened to press charges against my mother for harassment and me for assault as his daughter was playing the victim card. Despite my unimposing appearance, I stand at five foot five and weigh a mere 95 pounds, resembling an edgy goth anime character. Fear didn't grip me. I knew that if he dared to lay a hand on me, my petite mother would promptly use her taser until its battery died. However, events unfolded differently from what I expected. My mother handed the man an eviction letter, making it clear that he had 30 days to pay the overdue rent and the current month's rent. Otherwise, she would take him to court. Furthermore, she warned him that if his daughter ever tried to instigate another fight with me, she would ensure that the girl faced serious assault and battery charges before her graduation. Realizing the gravity of the situation, the girl transferred to another school a week later. As for us, we decided to use the extra money obtained from the back rent to take a vacation in the mountains. And so, this incident not only put an end to my bullying ordeal, but also allowed my mother to receive the rent she was owed. It was a satisfying conclusion to an otherwise challenging situation. In my first marriage, I was with a woman who had bipolar syndrome. When she took her medication, she was amazing. However, she eventually convinced herself that she didn't have a problem and stopped taking her meds. Over the years, I dealt with a lot, including her fake pregnancies and numerous lies. Holding down a job was a constant struggle for her, as she would only last a month or two before getting fired. Whenever she lost a job, she would blame everyone except herself. During the times when she was between jobs, I noticed some of my belongings going missing, like movies and collectibles. Although I suspected her, I had no concrete proof. Eventually. She started her own house cleaning business, using her exceptional cleaning skills and obsession with tidiness to attract clients. Despite her condition, she was charming and likable and her business grew rapidly. I believed things were improving and I was proud of her success. She even started earning more money than me. However, one night she didn't come home and I was filled with panic. Frantically calling her phone yielded no response, so I reached out to her sister who said, I want to start off by saying it's not my fault. It turned out that when my wife arrived at her first cleaning client's house, the police were waiting for her. It came to light that she had been not only cleaning their houses, but also stealing from their jewelry boxes, purses, and other valuable possessions. Later that night, I received a call from her in jail. She was sobbing and begging for my forgiveness. I tried to be sympathetic, and she informed me that they would release her the next day on her own recognizance. The following morning, around 7 a.m., there was a knock on my door. Opening it, I found two uniformed police officers and a detective. They thoroughly searched our apartment and asked me a barrage of questions. I cooperated fully, answering honestly. When my wife finally returned home that night, she continued to apologize profusely, Deep down, though, I had already made up my mind that I was done with the relationship. Knowing how volatile her outbursts could be, I decided not to reveal my decision just yet. Instead, I began planning with my family to move out of the apartment while she was away. The first day of her trial arrived, and although she wanted me there for moral support, I had fallen ill with the flu. As I vomited into the sink, she screamed at me for not being supportive, making my resolve to leave even stronger. My plan was to wait until she was sentenced and then move out while she was away. 
avoiding any confrontations. However, she kept getting trial extensions, delaying my departure. One day, while she was at her new job, I called my father and brother to come over and we quickly packed up my belongings. As fate would have it, she had forgotten something at home and showed up when we were halfway done loading my things into the trailer. She erupted in screams and tears, questioning why I was leaving her before jumping into her car and speeding off. I moved back in with my parents and began investigating further. It turned out that she wasn't just stealing from her clients. She had also stolen from me and my parents during her visits. My mother mentioned that some of her childhood gold jewelry had gone missing but hadn't wanted to accuse anyone. As I unpacked my belongings, I discovered that my entire collection of twelve Star Wars figures, which I had painstakingly gathered over the years, was nowhere to be found. I later discovered that she had listed them on Craigslist for a fraction of their value. Additionally, I learned that she had opened an eBay account in my name and posted pictures of my nephew's highly sought, after Nintendo Wii, during its prime, for sale to multiple people. However, she never sent out the items and pocketed the cash before eBay could intervene. And now it was time for revenge. This is where the story takes a satisfying turn. Despite being a thief herself, she had unknowingly crossed paths with the wrong person, me. After my ex-wife stopped appearing for court dates and disappeared from our apartment, I decided to dig deeper. Eventually, I discovered that she had moved in with the ex-girlfriend of a friend of mine. I created a fake Facebook account under a random name and befriended her new roommate. Soon enough, she started discussing my ex-wife as her roommate, confirming her whereabouts. I informed her that I had a collection of Twilight promo merchandise, which they were excited about, and expressed my intention to send it to them. The roommate readily shared her address. With that information in hand, I contacted the sheriff's department in their county and informed them that I knew where a fugitive with warrants was hiding out. They promptly showed up and arrested her on Valentine's Day. She ended up spending the next several months in jail while her trial proceeded. Eventually, she was convicted of five felony counts of theft and received an eight-month prison sentence. I don't want to speak ill of her, but my heart aches for the people she victimized. Some of the jewelry she stole belonged to individuals' deceased parents or grandparents instead of being cherished by their loved ones. Those precious items were taken by her to make a quick buck. Oh, and as for my Star Wars toys, I want them back, you witch. I am a young project manager for an unlimited commercial GC. I picked up a hammer for the first time six years ago. No prior experience. I was raised believing if you work hard and apply yourself, you will be successful. For two years, I learned everything that I could in the construction industry, took my work home with me, and studied on my own time to better myself. For that, I was promoted to foreman. I was brought in to take over a small project at a 12-building, 120-unit condo complex. It started small, and the board of directors for the HOA told me, they loved my professionalism, work ethic, and ability to complete projects on time and under budget. We won a big contract because of that small project. That was three years ago. I have since taken over the job of foreman, superintendent, and project manager. I do the billing, meetings with engineers and board members, scheduling, takeoff, material ordering. I even train the subs on application of new products because we didn't have enough mid-management. The project just passed $2.7 million. We got a bid request for another $3 million job in the same complex. All the while, the board of directors are telling me how appreciative they are and how they've gone through five different contractors in the years before committing to my company because of my management and quality of work. This boosted my confidence, and I went to the owners asking for the raise they promised me one year ago for my production. They told me the experience you're gaining is far more valuable. I said, you're right. I put my resume on public, got contacted by a headhunter, just accepted an offer this week for 80 k a year salary, full benefits, 28 days PTO, including holidays, in the office now. No more working from the field full in my own truck. Laptop Wi-Fi in my truck for on-the-go billing when I visit the out-of-state projects. $80 per diem. 100% matching 401k for the first three years of my employment, quarterly bonus program, 
The company I'm with now only pays me 40 k and has none of the above listed benefits. The final nail in the coffin was when the owners bragged about how much my project made in a company meeting and then denied me a Christmas bonus. I laid this offer on their desk Friday and watched their jaws hit the floor. I told the HOA board president of the project I'm running about my resignation when they couldn't match my offer. His eyes got big and requested a meeting with the owners and expressed serious concern about moving forward with the new project without my involvement. They don't have anyone to replace me, and I'm not gonna lie. It feels good to hurt their pockets when I gave them everything I had for six years and only asked for the median project manager's salary. Screw those greedy jerks.